John chapter 8, verses 42 through 47. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye of, are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Thank you, Daniel, for the scripture reading, and Brother Philip leading us in these beautiful songs, and Brother Rolf in the good prayer, and we are thankful to be here on this Lord's Day, and we appreciate everyone here today. I want to ask the question this morning, will we believe the devil's lies or the Savior's truth? We have just read in John 8 about the Lord's words and how that many would not hear them. In the same chapter, in verses 31 and 32, Jesus said that if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Of course, the Lord's word is the truth. And everyone who believes that, which is contrary to the truth, is believing the lies of Satan. Last Sunday night we referred to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 at the end of verse 10 because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And then in verse 12 that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This of course refers to those who believe the lies of the devil. Without lies and deception, the devil would have no followers. He operates upon lies and deceit. He wants us to believe his lies so that we will not obey Christ and be saved. In the book of Revelation, it is said of Satan that he deceiveth the whole world. Revelation 12 and verse 9. When Eve believed his lies, she disobeyed God, and she sinned. She hurt herself, her husband, and all of mankind. God had warned them that of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat thereof. For you shall not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof, you shall surely die. In Genesis 2, verse 17 and 18. But we see how that Mother Eve listened to Satan in the form of a serpent in verse number 6 of chapter 3 of Genesis. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and also gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Adam and Eve disobeyed God when they did contrary to God's truth. And so death passed upon all men, because by one man sin entered into the world, Romans 5 and 12. So today people are still suffering the consequences of that first sin, because death is in the world. People die. My friends, when we believe the devil over God, we hurt ourselves and those around us, and our fellow man generally. And also we grieve God. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. 
We read how that God was grieved with man's sins back there before the flood in Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. So when we sin, we do much damage to ourselves, to other people, and we break the great and wonderful heart of God. Today, let us consider some things that Satan would have us to believe which are in contradiction to our Savior's truth. Anything contrary to the truth is the devil's lie. We have just read with Daniel and John 8, 44, that the devil is a liar and the father of it. And so all the lies in the world emanate from Satan ultimately, but the truth comes from God. In John 8, 36, after declaring that the truth shall make you free, in verse 32, Jesus said, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. It is by way of the Savior's truth that we're made free from sin and that we are saved. One of the lies, first of all, that the devil would have us to believe is that God is not real. This is a lie because God is real. He is the true and the living God. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 8. And we often sing the song, Our God, He is alive. Yes, God is alive. The devil makes a fool out of many people, though, because he leads them to believe or to doubt the existence and reality of God. The psalmist declared twice, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Psalm 14, 1 and Psalm 53, verse 1. We read of those in Romans 1 who gave up God and did not even want Him in their thoughts. Romans 1, 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. We have people today who are wise in this world and highly educated who deny God and His existence. We read of those in the lake of fire and brimstone, Revelation 21, verse 8. Among them are the unbelievers, those who do not believe in the Lord. That is the devil's lie. They will lose their souls because they will lose their souls eternally because they are believing Satan rather than Christ. But then another lie that the devil would have us to believe is that there are no consequences for the life that we live on this earth. There are no consequences. This is a denial of the truth stated by Paul, the truth of Christ, in Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. But yet the devil would have us to believe that you can just live any old way that you want to. There will be no consequences here or hereafter. You can just do as you please. Live as you please. Satan leads man to disbelieve God's warnings and his promises. Just like he lied to Eve when he told her regarding the tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the fruit thereof that if you eat of it, ye shall not surely die. He added one word to what the Lord had said, the little word not, but it made all the difference. He tried to make a liar out of God, but certainly no one can do that. God always speaks the truth. But then the other, another lie that the devil would deceive us into believing that we are only physical, that we do not have a soul, that we will not have a soul in eternity. That we do not have a spirit within us. I'd like to go back to the prophet Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 1. And there are many other places. Daniel speaks of the spirit within him, Daniel 7, 15. But here in Zechariah, the prophet says, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, 
which stretcheth forth the heavens, and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. God has given us a spirit, a soul. God has formed that within us. The one who created the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth has given each of us an eternal soul. Our soul is very important. Jesus spoke of the importance of the soul even over the body. When he said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The Lord warned in Mark 8, verse 36 and 37, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, friends, there are people today who will scoff the idea of the soul. They think, well, when we die, everything's over with for us. That we don't have a soul. They would deny the soul. You know that Christ died for our souls? In fact, the Bible teaches that when we die, the body will go back to the dust and the spirit of the God who gave it. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit of the God who gave it. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse number 7. But in believing this lie, this way man will follow the flesh and live after the flesh. This is what Paul said of those who live after the flesh. <clears throat> Romans 8 and verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. The things of the Spirit are revealed in the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit, Ephesians 6, 17. Those are the things that we are to follow and to obey, and not the things of the flesh. When man follows the flesh, he does the works of the flesh, which if a man do, he shall not inherit the kingdom of God, according to Galatians 5. 19 to 21. But then here is another lie of the devil. That one church is as good as another. You know, he's got a lot of preachers out there preaching that lie. You know, the devil has a lot of preachers in this world. Preachers that claim to be men of God, that claim to be preaching the gospel. But they are teaching lies of Satan. And this is one of them. The one church or one religious body is as good as another. But the fact of the matter is there is only one religious body, only one church that is pleasing to the Lord. And that is the one that is revealed in the New Testament of Christ. The one that our Lord and Savior promised to build. When he said upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. The one of which we read from the lips of Paul in speaking to the Ephesian elders in Acts 20, 28. The church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. The one of which we read in Ephesians 5, 23 to 27. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church has subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. The Lord certainly does not appreciate us comparing his blood-bought bride and body, the church, with those that are founded of men. Many today fall for this lie and end up working against Christ, against the truth, and for Satan. No doubt many of them do not realize this. They think they're doing God's bidding in laboring in religious denominations and religious bodies founded by men. But remember what Jesus said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up, Matthew 15, 13. And then here is another lie of the devil that people are believing and following rather than the truth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That all you have to do to be saved is believe only. Believe only. This way man can be religious but still be lost and be condemned. Satan has his way. People think they're doing right or that they're on the path to heaven, but they are deceived by the devil's lie. They are deceived into thinking that they are right by hearing and believing God's word only without obeying it. You know, the inspired James warned against this. 
He said, but be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving or deluding your own selves. James 1.22. When another person deceives us, or if we deceive ourselves, we are still believing the devil's lie. If we deceive ourselves into thinking that only hearing and believing is enough. In James 2.19, James warned that the demons also believe and shudder. The demons believe and shudder. Well, surely they do not obey the Lord. In that same chapter in verse 17, even so faith that hath not works is dead, being alone. And in verse 24, ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Our Savior taught the truth in the great Sermon on the Mount that we must do the will of God if we are to enter into heaven. In Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. But the devil does not want man to be saved. He's not like God. God does want us to be saved. He proved it even to the point that he would give his only begotten son for us. John 3.16 That Christ would give his life for us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5.6 And verse 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God and His Son, Jesus Christ, love men to the point that we cannot even comprehend or fathom the depth of their love for us. It is so great, my dear friends. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. But the devil does not love us. He does not care for us. Remember that he is a murderer, according to John 8, 44. He does not love our souls, but God does. God would have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy 2, 4. God wants us to come to the truth and obey it and follow the truth and be saved. But Satan wants us to believe a lie, which is contrary to the truth. Yes, the Bible teaches us that we must not simply have faith only, but we must believe and obey the Lord. Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Mark 16, 16. In Hebrews 5, verses 8 and 9, we read how that Christ obeyed and that we are to obey Him. Though He were a son, yet learned He obedience by the things which He suffered, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Who does the Lord say? And of whom is he the author of eternal salvation? To all who obey him and not simply have faith only. And then another lie of the devil is that your body is only yours. And it is your business what you do with your body. It's not God's business nor anyone else. We hear this a lot in regard to a defense of abortion. Women will say, well, it's my body. Well, no, that child within the mother is not her life, too. It's another person's life, that child within her. And when she slays and murders that child, she is taking the life of another person. And God hates the hands that shed innocent blood, according to Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. Yes, it is God's business what we do with our bodies. Let us turn to 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, verses 19 and 20. <clears throat> Paul said to the Christians at Corinth, to the Lord's church there, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. So, friends, I cannot simply say, well, it's my body, I'll do as I please. No, he goes on to say in the last verse, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. We are to give up our bodies to God in service to Him. In Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
And in 1 Corinthians 3, and in verse number 23, Paul declares, And ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. You belong to Christ. We belong to the Lord. It's not simply our body to do with as we please. One cannot defend fornication, lasciviousness, adultery, drunkenness, and other works of the flesh, Galatians 5, 19, 21, simply by saying, well, it's my body. I can do as I please. No, we cannot. If we do those things, we will lose our eternal souls. Paul warns us that we will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. One day we're going to have to give an account for what we have done in our bodies. Whether we have done good, if we've done the truth and obeyed the Lord's will, or if we have done <coughs> evil. The preacher, the wise man, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14 said, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now the devil does not want us to believe that truth. He does not want us to believe that one day we're going to have to answer to God for what we've done. He wants us to believe that's not real, that's not true. You know, there are a lot of people, and some even that claim to be Christians, that say, well, you shouldn't really fear God. You don't need to fear God. They will say, you need to love the Lord and obey Him on that basis. Well, truly, we do need to love the Lord and obey Him on that basis. John 14, 15, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. But the idea that we do not obey Him also because we fear Him and have the utmost respect and reverence for Him, that is the devil's lie. We are to fear God and keep His commandments. We are to have a healthy dread of the consequences of disobedience to God and displeasing Him. We are to reverence and respect Him and have a dread of displeasing Him, although that we do love Him and should obey Him because we love Him, but also because we fear Him, according to Ecclesiastes 12, 13. But here's another devil's lie. The Bible is just an ordinary book. It's just like any other book or like any other religious book. It did not come from God. It's just another book. If the devil can convince you and me into believing that, then he minimizes our respect for the Bible and causes us not to hunger and thirst for it and to want to learn it more and more and to obey it. If Satan can just deceive people into believing this, then man will not be receptive to the truth and the things that are therein. But the truth of the matter is that the Bible is God's inspired word. In 2 Timothy 3, beginning at verse 15, Paul declares to the young preacher Timothy, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, that is complete, freely furnished, and all good works are under every good work. The Bible, my friends, is no ordinary book. It continues to be, after all this time, on the world's bestsellers book. And one of the most and Possibly, and I believe this is a fact, the most translated book in the world in the different languages. Now, how many ancient books do you know, thousands of years old, that are on the bestsellers list? There's not a one. The Bible is the only one. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing you, and dividing son of soul and spirit, and the joints of the matter, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Friends, you know why so many people hate the Bible and want to get rid of it? Well, yes, the devil is behind them. But they know the power that's in the Bible. They know the power of it. 
This is why so many are against the reading of it in public and the studying of it. They know there's power in the Bible. You know, sadly, we have some in the church, though, although they say amen to that, they don't treat the Bible like that because they don't read and study it on a daily basis. They're not like the noble Bereans who search the Scriptures daily, Acts 17 11. They're not like David who meditated upon the law of the Lord both day and night, Psalm 1 and 2. They do not seek to learn it and obey it with all of their hearts. Why is this? Oh, we may give lip service to our faith in the Bible. But unless we read and study and obey it, friends, it is only lip service. Some people might wonder, why is my faith no stronger than it is? Well, do you hear and read and study the Word of God? Paul said, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. It is through God's Word, the Bible, that we live spiritually. Jesus answered Satan in Matthew 4, For it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Do we not know that the Word of God, the Scriptures, give us life and strength? Jesus said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. John 6, verse 63. My friends, do we know that this book will lead us to heaven? In Acts 20, verse 32, Paul declared to the Ephesian elders, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. God's word builds us up against discouragement, against temptation, against the fiery darts of the wicked. It gives us strength that we can find nowhere else. The Bible does that for us. Many lies are told about the Bible. One of the lies that are told is that, well, you can make the Bible say anything you want to. I had a man tell me that on more than one occasion. He said, no, the Bible doesn't say more than one thing. It only has one message, and that's for all men. When Jesus, for example, said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, that says only one thing. You must believe and be baptized if you are to be saved. You cannot get more, more than one message out of that. You cannot get contrary and conflicting messages out of it. That's what he meant. That you can make the Bible say different things out of the same passage. No, my friends, if that's the case, then we have misinterpreted what the Bible says. The reason people, people misconstrue the Bible is that they do not do what Paul said in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But last of all today, and there are many other lies of the devil we can consider, but we've looked at a few today. There is the devastating lie that Jesus Christ is simply a good man, but not God. That perhaps he is a prophet. Now that's what the Mohammedans teach. Those of the movement of Islam that Jesus was a prophet of God, but that He was not God. There are many who would say that Jesus was a good man, but He was not divine. We cannot believe the Bible if we do not believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. He is the central figure of the Bible. The Bible in no uncertain terms declares His deity, His Messiahship, and His Lordship. His signs and miracles were done to prove this. And truly many of the signs did Jesus in the presence of His disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He was God in the flesh. Emmanuel, Matthew 1, 21 23. God was manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3, 16. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1 declares, and then in verse 14, and the Word was made flesh 
and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And when Peter confessed the deity of Christ, the Lord commended him. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjon. When Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Matthew 16, verse 16 and 17. You know why the devil wants us to believe that lie? So that we will lose our souls. And we will lose our souls if we do not believe that truth. Jesus said in John 8, 24, that except ye believe that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. My friends, the devil is lost. He will be in hell forever and ever. And he wants us to be lost too. He wants us to believe these lies so that we will be lost in him, with him. As we close today, the devil does not want us to believe with all our hearts that the precious blood of Jesus Christ saves man, justifies him, Romans 5, 9. It cleanses him, Revelation 1, 5, from the sin. And it redeems his precious soul, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. The devil doesn't want you and I to have faith in the blood of Christ. But in the blood of Christ, we must truly believe with all of our hearts if we are to go to heaven. We must believe in it to the point that we will be baptized out of our sins, washed away. Upon hearing and believing the Word of God, Romans 10, 17, and repentance, Acts 2, 38, and confessing Jesus Christ, Son of God, Acts 8, 37, then going down to the waters of baptism, Acts 8, 38 and 39, to rise to walk in the innocence of life, Romans 6, 4. A person cannot be saved without faith in the operation of God, Colossians 2, 12. Without believing with all of our hearts that God can and will operate to remove our sins by the blood of Christ. But He will. Acts 22, 16, and now why tears thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. Call him in the name of the Lord. We also are to believe that if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us. That is, it keeps on cleansing us from all sin. But if there be any today who have not obeyed the gospel and put him on in baptism, who have not continued or who have not continued in the light with him, we have the opportunity to repent and pray God's forgiveness that we might be cleansed from our sins. If this be your need today, would you not come as we stand and we see you? Bring Christ your broken life so far by sin He will create a new May